I want to share with you in this video some kind of errors that you're going to get when you're doing app script. When you're automating your sheets and you're writing app script, it can get very frustrating if you encounter errors over and over again. And I'm going to encounter these errors because I think in in fact, you should not run from errors, but you should actually run into errors because errors, when you know how to read them, are going to tell you exactly what's wrong. And sometimes you have to decipher it, meaning you have to know how to fix the error. And I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to introduce some errors and I'm going to show you where you can find errors and where you can fix those once you run into them. So a few places where you're going to see those errors are when you save the app script, when you run the app script in your executions when you're running it from a custom menu you'll see it at the top of your sheet and you'll also find it in an executions list which i will show you that now so we're just going to go code some app script we're going to code something pretty simple we're going to make a little bit of some math that's automatic so the first thing i'm going to do actually is going to go get a custom menu from bettersheets.co slash app snippets i'm going to just copy this code here and what it does is it creates a menu a custom menu at the top that we can click and run these kinds of functions that we want to run. Function that we want to run is do some math. And we're just going to take two variables that are in A1 and A2 in the active sheet. We're going to take 34 and 55. And in B1, we're going to put that in there. So if we have this function, do some math, and we want to take variable 1 equals spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet, get sheet by name. We're going to use data. We're going to rename it data once we get done with this. Get range, not range, but range. Get A1, get value. We are definitely need to change that. And now we will do exactly the same thing, but with a 10, call this two. And then we're going to do some math with it. And we're going to say spreadsheet, get active spreadsheet, get range, set. We're going to do that and one. And the value we're going to set is result. Actually, we'll call it maths. Variable maths equals 1 plus 2. So this is simple. I've saved it. Saving project. You'll see the orange button up here is not saved yet. And everything is looking good. If we run it, if we select our function here, do some math, and run it, execution log here, we'll ask for Permissions first, let's do those. The very first time you run it, it's gonna ask you for those permissions. Make sure we have those permissions. Run it, there you go. And let's see, we have 89 here. Perfect, so it worked. But if, let's say we have not completed our app script here. We have written a syntax error is what it's called. And it will give us here down on the bottom, syntax error, syntax error, unexpected token line 10. So we can look at line 10 and say, it underlines this curly bracket, right? And it tells you this is where the error is, which it is correct, that is where the error is, but the error is caused because we have not the parentheses here. So once we add the parentheses, we can command S and save again. This kind of syntax error will occur only when you save. So if you're writing a script, writing a long script, and let's say we do not have this end curly bracket here, and we try to save, even though maybe you're trying to save a draft and you know this is not finished or you don't know that it's not finished and it has this red underline here and you try to do command S or up here, save project, it will give you a syntax error and it says unexpected end of input line 16. So it shows you, hey, there's something missing here. This is where the error is, not necessarily what the fix is. What is the solution to that problem? The solution to this particular problem is that we need to get the correct syntax. If you ever see syntax error, the solution is always fix the syntax, which in many cases will be different. In this case, we must have function, the word function, we have the name of the function, a parentheses in, a parentheses out, and then curly brackets start and then curly brackets end. There may be some syntax errors in here. For instance, if you miss a parentheses here, and instead do a semicolon. Let's try to save that without the parentheses. We also have a syntax error and it says unexpected token. So it tells us where the error is, but it doesn't tell us the solution is to add this parentheses, but it does tell us where it is. So line 12, and it shows us, let's see that again, because it does go away pretty quickly. It says unexpected token and it gives us that semicolon right here. So it says, oh, something's wrong here. If you notice, if I can zoom in a little, I don't know if I can zoom in much. 
Oh, there. I can zoom in a lot. There, I can zoom in a lot. Let's add a few lines here. You can see the parentheses here is red, which is different than the other parentheses. When we close it, it is fine. We can hit Command S or click up here, Save Project. Everything's fine. Again, the error is just showing you where the error is and not the solution, but we can sometimes figure out what is the solution by seeing what is in the context of that error. Again, mainly it's going to be parentheses. If maybe we have this comma here, let's see what happens. If does it give us a syntax error? And in this case, it does not give us a syntax error because this is pretty much correct syntax for something. But the unfortunate problem is that our solution is going to be wrong. Our, our function will be wrong and that it will produce the wrong thing. Actually, we can see that here. Let's run it, do some math. Let's see if we have an error here. Nope, no error, but we do have the wrong output here. And that is going to be, we'll do some dw here in a minute. But first, I want to actually make this plus as well. And then this maths, I'm going to actually call this one, two and delete everything. Save it, should be stickly correct, but now I'm gonna open this and we wanna run this from the menu. So we're gonna call this do some math. We're going to refresh our sheet so we have a menu show up. Let's see that menu show up here. Oh, <laughs> and it didn't actually save the correct name here. Let's do that, let's fix this. I think I just did it too quickly. Do some math, save it, make sure it saves. That's one important weird thing about App Script is we have to make sure, really make sure it saves. Once, if we see that orange dot there, it has not saved. All right, error finding and fixing, let's call it that. Okay, let's close this and refresh it again so that it opens again and we will see our custom menu come up. We'll do some math and here we get an error. So this is the other place where we can get an error is when we try to run the function from the sheet, we get reference error one, two is not defined. So this tells us that something here, one, two, which we might not know what that is. If we're running code from someone else, we are copying and pasting code and we get an error. One, two is not defined. We can click on details, not much more details, but let's take this one, two. What is it that is not defined? Let's copy it, dismiss it. And let's go look at the, let's go look at the app script again. And what we can do is command F and we can search for this one, two. So here we go. We get variable maths equals one, two. That is the only place that it exists. Okay, so then I must have some error because this variable is being assigned the, whatever the output of one, two is. Oh, I see here variable one and variable two. Maybe I'm trying to add these together or multiply them together and I forgot the actual plus sign or we want to multiply them. So we can fix that by just adding that here and changing this one to maybe it's the wrong name. Sometimes you will try to type one, two. Now syntactically this is correct. So it, it is saving, but let's try to run, do some math here. One is not defined. So it's capital one is not defined. And again, we can come back here, command F one and we find, oh, one is here. That is our variable. Why doesn't it have the variable here? Oh, because the O is capitalized. This happens a lot if we are doing first item and here we type in first item without the capitalization and we say second item. Let's put the second item with the capitalization. You can tell beforehand that this gray, this is grayed out and this is not. And you can see this is not used. That's what that means. If it's grayed out, if the variable name is grayed out, it means it's not used later on. But syntactically, this is correct. Syntax, fine, it's saving. And let's run it again and show that you have, let's see the error. Error first item is not defined. So again, we can copy it, go here, first item. Now, we have capitalized one of the letters, but it's still finding both of them. So this could be confusing because you're like, these are the same thing. These are exactly the same variable, variable first item, especially with capitalized L's and I's and zeros and O's, those things that can get mixed up, right? And I've shown you this is a problem because the I is capitalized and the I is capitalized, not here. So we can fix that with just capitalizing that I. Let's save it and show you that their error does not exist now. Do some math. There we go. We got the answer it's giving us the correct answer. So we've gone through where you're saving them, you're getting some syntax errors running in AppScript. So you will find that you can run it here. You can select 
here, and you will get the error down here. So again, let's say there is some error first. And let's run it from here. We will get the error right here. Same error that we would get if we were running it from our custom menu here. And at the top of the sheet, and I want to show you one last place where you might see errors. And this is really good if someone else is running the error, or is running an app script and getting an error and you are not. You can go over here on the left side. It says executions. And you can see all the executions here. Now, one m note of reference here, something to note, is that if someone, if you created a trigger, you can see the fact that other people have created a trigger, but you can't see their trigger, so you can't fix their trigger, but you can fix the app script. And every execution here is every execution in the sheet. So if you have something like an on edit, you'll see a ton of on edits. So it can get pretty hard to find the actual failed thing, especially if you're running lots of or on edits or on opens, and a lot of people are using that sheet. I will show you how to find that. So we have this failure here, and it will share with you the same failure that we saw in the sheet. So we'll say a reference error. This is really good place if you add logging. So let's call this, let's do, let's say we do not know the fact that this is first item and this is variable first, and we're trying to log it. We can do logger.log and put in the item. We can say first item, let's copy paste that, logger.log, second item. So these two variables, what are they? Are our variables wrong? Let's find out, let's save that, let's go here. Do some math. We're going to get the error, but we're like, hey, we're getting an error. Someone else ran this code. Let's go look at those logs. And there it is. There's some logs. We can add more information to this log instead of just the result. We can say in quotes, first item, give it a space and then a plus sign. And then here, second item, give it a colon and a space and a plus sign. Now let's run this again, get the error again but look at it in the uh, execution. So we get the error. Let's look at our executions. It is the top one. It, right now it's the top one. Maybe there's other failures. We may, if it happens right away, if we're running this execution right away, we may have to take some time, refresh this. Takes a little bit of time. There we go. First item, 34. Second item, 35, 55. First is not defined. Ooh, I have found the error, right? This is first item. This is first, not first item. So we can go over to our sheet, our app script, and say, oh, here it is. First is should be first item. And now it is fixed. These logs will remain even if you fix the errors. Here's the logs. That's fantastic. Go over to our executions. It says completed, and we have still logs. So that's really cool that we can still see the same exact logs, even when it's not has an error. Another error you might get is variable undefined. And if we, let's say, have actually do this function, do some math, this first item does not exist now. And let's run, do some math. It has saved, so it's not a syntax error, but it's a reference error. It says reference error, first item is not defined. So we can go to our first and see, oh, here's first item. Oh yeah, we didn't get it. Maybe it's here. And you'll get this often, by the way, if we create, let me say, delete this and delete this to fix it. You will get this undefined regularly. If you create, do more math, first, second. So we have two th items, first and second, and we will return first plus second. If we want to test this, usually correct way is to go over here. Let's create a new sheet and do equals, do more math. 44, comma, 55, and we get 99. That is testing this function. But you're like, I want to test it from here. So I'm going to select it from this sheet, do more math, and click run. What's going to happen is it's running totally fine, but it has no <laughs> variables here. Variables need, if we actually do something to the variables, let's see, variable result equals first, second turn result. But let's see if we actually run some function if it gives us this error, null. So. This is giving us null because there's nothing happening here. Um, let's try to do more, not just math, but times. Maybe it's because it's zero, zero. So I've given it something more complicated to do. Let's see if it will run. Nope, it still runs. We actually found the error, but it's not where we thought. So again, we have all of these places where it could be. It's actually in the result. So in the result, it says first undefined. 
because these are null. So it's actually running the script as it is, but because first and second are null here, meaning there's nothing there, it's doing this math and it's ending up with a result of undefined. But it's not actually telling us that. Let's do this, let's take out result and see if it will tell us. It still doesn't tell us. What you need to do is if you have a, if you have an app script where it takes in variables in its name, you need to actually define those variables somewhere. So as a test, what I like to do is even include these here, but I still like to do variable first equals 44, variable second equals is equal to 56, and then put this, set this value as result. Now run it. Now it will give us some actual information here, and it will have a correct answer here. So it's not undefined. So that undefined actually didn't show up as an error when we executed the script, but it did show us in the log and the result of it. Hey, it was undefined. It gave us un the word undefined. So that's very interesting, and hopefully this video has helped you know where you're going to find those errors, how to fix them, or rather how to approach fixing them. If you have a syntax error, it's literally just you've done something wrong with the JavaScript. Usually you can just take that, put that into ChatGPT, or, some, or just look at how the function is written, not what the function involves, but how it is written. And then if you're finding you're getting errors, read the error, go to that line, and literally look at just before it is going to be where you're going to probably find the error, or searching for whatever variable is going to come up in that error will help you find and fix your errors in AppScript.